Hello and welcome back for Express Videos for ACCA paper F7. Our Express Notes, which are the basis for this Express Videos, can be found on our website www.theexpgroup.com. We will be covering in uh, this video IS-12, which deals with taxation. IS-12 actually deals with both current and deferred tax. Current tax is the amount uh, which is actually requested by the tax authorities in respect of taxable profits or losses for the current year. This is an estimate that the tax department will do at each year end and won't be booked into the accounts. This will never be the exactly the same amount that is going to be paid next year to tax authorities because by the time we finalize our accounts, there is bound to be differences over an underpayment of actually tax with respect to um, trading income. Deferred tax, on the other hand, is actually due on gains which are recognized in the current period, but they are assessed for tax purposes in different or future accounting periods. Deferred tax generally is a net liability, but occasionally can be a net asset. So, in short, deferred tax is just future tax. Current tax, it will be reported directly in PNL like any other provision. It's just the year end estimate of the tax due to the tax authorities based on the current year profits. Like any other provision, we will debit PNL and credit current tax. Deferred tax, on um, the other hand, it's kind of pervasive in the accounts and either it is examined in a separate question, not really that often as a standalone question. Most of the cases, I mean, most scenarios, it will be part usually of question two in the accounts. Why do we have future tax? Um, we are using in the valuation of all assets and liabilities whatever our accounting policy says as per a certain IFRS and these rules of valuation are not going to be the same for tax purposes so a common example of this one it will be depreciation so we will be using accounting depreciation when we actually calculate it for the year in respect of all our uh, non-current assets but for tax purposes we will be using different rules and therefore there's going to be a difference between the accounting rules or sometimes called the accounting base and the tax rules which sometimes is called the tax base of the same asset and liability deferred tax take a statement of financial position approach meaning i'm looking at all my assets and liabilities at year end as per the valuation in the accounts and I compare this accounting base, as we call it, with the tax base, or in short, whatever the tax department says is the tax value of the assets and liabilities. It's just an application, if you want, of the matching concept. Okay, I will report, for instance, again in the financial statements because I'm increasing the uh, valuation of a non current asset. For instance, I'm revaluing the building which I use for admin purposes to the market value and I increase its value by a million. This will trigger extra depreciation for accounting purposes, but for tax purposes, this extra depreciation, it's a disallowable expense. What will be deducted is just the tax depreciation. And therefore, since I report our gain 
I cannot pretend that I will not have to actually pay taxes on it when I will charge virtually extra depreciation on a higher amount which is not deductible for tax purposes. Hence, paying a higher corporate income tax. So the key knowledge is to know the difference between the tax base, which is the carrying value of an asset in the statement of financial position in according with the accounting policy, okay? I use capital allowances, for instance, as depreciation, not the accounting depreciation. Temporary differences. So we said that we will have what is called an IFRS base and a tax base. And we will always take the difference between those two values at the end. It will be a positive or a negative difference, depending whether or not we have an asset or a liability. This difference, okay, we have to judge in the exam whether or not it's a temporary one or is going to be a permanent difference. A temporary difference, it actually means that it will cancel effectively at the end of the useful life of the asset. So if we talk about the same asset, okay, which we depreciate using um, the rules in IS-16 for accounting purposes, and we are using the capital allowances as per whatever tax rules are in our jurisdiction, eventually the same amount, which is the historical cost, let's say the million that I pay for the building, will reach our income statement as depreciation or capital allowances, but in different accounting periods. Over, let's say, 20 years, this million will reach our PNL for accounting purposes and also for taxing purposes. A permanent difference, which basically is not a phrase which is actually used in IS-12, but it actually helps us understand the concept of deferred tax. A permanent difference arises when an item is going to be treated differently for accounting purposes and tax purposes. What I mean in here, we will always have some income or revenues which are never taxed. Like for instance, when we receive a government grant, it will be pointless actually for the government to actually require tax on a subsidy that is just granted to the entity. Or we will have some expenses like entertainment, for instance, which will never be deducted for tax purposes, like fines that we pay to state authorities. It's another example of a permanent differences. And those permanent differences will never give rise to deferred tax because there is no future tax on it. So, in short, the exam approach should be the following. Go through all the accounting policy for the entity at the end, okay, and identify where the IFRS base is not the same as the tax base. Identify then the permanent differences which you should ignore for the purpose of calculating deferred tax. That would be government grants receivable, business entertaining expenditure, and state in your exam that this is a permanent differences and therefore it has no future tax effect. For each temporary difference, which is everything else that you actually consider not to be permanent, calculate the temporary differences at the, using, at the year end, multiply the temporary differences with the tax rate which is going to be in force when you actually expect the temporary differences to be reversed. So if you have a credit temporary difference, that will actually produce a deferred tax asset. And if you have a debit temporary differences, that will actually produce a credit deferred tax liability.
We will look then at all the Fortex assets for evidence of impairment. So, evidence of impairment will mean I would need to have enough taxable profits in the future in order to offset the deferred tax liability against. I will calculate the movement then in deferred tax liability and the difference at the year end versus the opening balance. I will charge it directly into the PL. Then and only then, if you do have time in the exam, try to look for temporary differences which actually were not reported in PL when you book the respective gain, but in equity. And in here, we will have something like property revaluation of movement in the value of available for sale financial asset. And then for these types of transaction, uh, reflect the associated deferred tax liability in most of the case as an equity movement, not p &L. This step, the split into 7A and 7B, you will actually do in the exam if and only if there is time to reflect it. Now, let's look at an example. Let's assume we have a building. We have a software. We have a provision for um, warranties, warranty provision. And we have another provision for a fine that is going to become payable towards the fiscal authorities. Let's assume that our accounting base or the IFRS value is 10,000 for the building, 4,000 for the software, 3,000 is the warranty provision for the goods which were sold during the accounting period, and we do have to pay 20 as a fine. The tax base associated to the building is only 8,000, only 500 for the software, nothing for the warranty provision, Pretty much the tax authorities do not care about any provision that we book into the account. The expense will actually be deductible when incurred. And for the fine, this expense will never be deducted for tax purposes. Okay? And the tax rate at which we expect the uh, difference to actually be reversed is going to be 30%. For the assets, 25%, let's say, for the warranty provision, and again, 30% for the fine. How shall we basically reflect the deferred tax at the year end? What we will have to do in the exam is first to calculate the difference between the tax base and what we call the IFRS base, which in here is going to be 10,000. For software is going to be 3,500. It's going to be 3,000 for the provision and 20 for the provision for the fine. Now the second step in the exam after we calculate the difference is to decide which one is temporary and which one is permanent. The easiest way to do is to decide which one is temporary and uh, which one is permanent and the difference, all of them will be temporary. So in here, the only one that is going to be a permanent difference is the one which actually relates to the fine. Why? because the fine is never deductible as an expense for tax purposes. Not now when we book it as a provision, not even when we actually will pay it to the tax authorities. The rest will be temporary differences. Next step in the exam, apply the for tax implication, apply the rate. And in here we will have 600 
1050 and 750. Now we have to decide which one will be a deferred tax asset, which one will be a deferred tax liability. So the difference in building valuation, we have an IFRS value of 10,000 and a tax base of 8,000. So the difference is actually going to um, reflect a deferred tax liability in the future. Why? Because for accounting purposes, we will charge depreciation of 10,000 down to zero. We will actually be deductible for tax purposes only 8,000 out of it. And therefore, we will pay future, ta future taxes on the difference of 2,000. The same reasoning is behind the software. We have a 3,500 temporary difference. But for tax purposes, we already have considered the allowances of 3,500 because the tax base is only 500. And therefore, in the future, we will charge again an amortization of 4,000 in the PNL. That will be charged in PNL. But for tax purposes, only 500 is going to be deductible. And therefore, on the temporary differences, I will actually pay higher taxes in the future. Contrast that with the warranty provision, where we actually have a temporary difference of 3000 and that will actually give rise to a deferred tax asset. Why? Because the expense will be deductible when we actually will incur it in the next accounting period, when we actually will repair the products which were sold under the warranty. And therefore, we will just have to book the difference in the provision between what is the value at the year end and what was the value at the beginning of the year. And this is all there is to it to defer tax.